Not just to talk about the funny part where we can see that what is the added value of our project, but also to talk about that what is the probability of defaulting. So the book nicely talks about country risk and then it uh, starts to talk about political risk, financial risk, but uh, also at the lecture uh, we highlighted the problem that uh, this is just one side of the picture. So at least if you are focusing on uh, rating agencies, then uh, they are not just focusing only on uh, the external environment, like what is happening within the industry, what is happening uh, within the country and with our competition, but also they are focusing on issues at the level of company. So they are focusing on financial risk profile. And unfortunately, if we would like to make our own prediction about the probability of default, <laughs> then we can do only an analysis for this part. So practically we could make a two-sided arrangement where we are scoring in the country-related country risk and also the defining a score for the company. So if it would be really precise, then we could do this. But today, let's focus on corporate related things. So, but still, if you would like to have, so let's create a nice report about uh, default probability. So at least let's go to the report of standards and poor's, obviously not from 2018, because let's check the most recent report. And, uh, and after that, uh, we can see that what is the status of the sector nowadays, of this, sorry, industry nowadays. And after that, uh, we can move forward and we can do our uh, corporate specific analysis. I just close the door. Okay, so luckily, SNP provides us an annual data, sorry, an annual report with yes, and usually it's free. Sometimes it's behind the paywall, but sometimes it's not. Except all. So here we can see at the beginning of the report just an overall. So what is happening in terms of defaults. And unfortunately nowadays, so uh, first business cycle. Let's see. So the business cycle clock of the European Commission shows us that uh, not custom, sorry, all available data. So, so since 2022, the whole Eurozone, so that's why France and that's why uh, the corporate environment for us is uh, not in a recession state yet, but at least in a slow growth or slow down uh, phase uh, in terms of business cycle. So, so this can be the first red flag what we can uh, highlight in our report and also if we are checking uh, the data we can see okay for the us national bureau of economic research has this, their own business cycles database and yeah so they are still not in recession so if you have any recession time periods then you can see these gray lines Lines, columns, bars, bars uh, here, and and we can say that okay, there was the small, small crisis here due to the COVID lockdowns, but uh, they were not falling back into a recession state, even under the high interest rate environment, which is not that high at all. But okay, compared to the last one and a half decade that was high interest rate environment and high inflation environment, but still uh, 
this economy is way more healthier, so so we can say that they would be, which is good for us because we are operating on a global market, so Eurozone is just one market segment for us, so if it's this one is close to recession and this one is not, then it's still okay-ish. The problem is that obviously if once it's going for starts to fall in recession, then member states government in the ESA will have lower willingness to provide us any additional funding or capital or, or anything like this to survive. So the companies pushed forward market-based funding, which personally it's a good thing. So I would not be ashamed that we have to live from the market. Okay, so let's see that there is many, many different breakdowns uh, in terms of ratings and so on. Even largest global rated defaulters by year. So, who was the... What is this? Bausch has cause ins. Have you heard anything about this? Yeah, because China ever grounded, that was <laughs> a huge... What was this? Just for fun. What are you doing? American, Canadian, multinational... Specialty pharmaceutical company from Quebec. Mm. Okay, so they defaulted and that was big. Uh, and they defaulted in two years, so... Nice. Okay. Also, uh, this one is interesting because it shows us that what is the deterioration rate. So, if you are uh, in triple B category, which is good, uh, then uh, usually it takes seven years until you are falling into uh, default. If you are just in B, or, or uh, in triple C, then it takes a uh, shorter time. So if you are in triple C, then sometimes it's just instantaneous. So zero year or... or uh, so you are way closer. But let's check... Sooner or later, okay, there is this who defaulted when. Yeah, so global default rates by industry percentage. So in 2023, only 2.7% of uh, companies in our space, automotive, capital goods, metal, so it's quite a big uh, industry here. So practically everybody is inside there. Uh, so 27 is not much. We can see that obviously this environment is not that great shape nowadays because of lack of demand and because of uh, huge investments into EV manufacturing and now the demand is not keeping up with the supply right now. So huge storages of cars just stored nowadays because uh, nobody would like to buy them. But right now we can think this is a hiccup on the market and this is just a spike because of unfortunate events and uh, we can see that this is not that far from the historical average level of default so it's the historical level is 2% 2.7 is no big deal so a year before it was way under and uh, so we can save this one because I think that after that Ah, this was other. So, what is the median rating for defaulters? So, yeah, sorry, in the industry, so companies mostly have this uh, trip, uh, double B uh, rating, which is good, uh, but it's quite strange that 
if companies are lower than this by just one B, then they have a tendency to die after six years or five years. It depends on how we are doing this. So, so there is this deterioration that even if you are rated B right now, like our company in the original state, because we were building up the whole case study that this is B rated, then we can see that we have five years to consolidate everything because of the revise. There is a chance that we can go down. Yeah. Okay, so we have this raw material and also before creating our own, let's check the original company. So Arian space. If I know where this one is there. Because obviously there are multiple of them, because why not? Friday nice base launch company. Yeah, this is the proper one, because there is another IT company. And if we are just checking, so smart ratios, credit risk. So <laughs> the probability of default, according to writers, it's A minus. Again, let's load in the no recovery valuation. And yeah, this is the valuation. So profit and loss statement. So come on, the com company is not making any profit for three years from the five. So <laughs> in terms of profitability, there is no profitability as you can see. So it, they provided the red flag. Uh, in terms of leverage, okay, they don't have debt, literally. So we can say that profitability is just hurting the parent company, so until the parent companies are putting uh, additional fresh capital into uh, this company, then it will be not defaulting because no uh, lenders will uh, look for this one, but come on. This A minus is so, so bad. I, I'm, or not reliable, or, or I can't say additional <sighs> things for this one. So, obviously, since they don't have public debt, then they don't have any ratings from SP, Moody's, or Fitch. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see SpaceX, because if this is the <laughs> okay not the one in belgium uh, spacex llc i think this one because there is also multiple spacex companies because of subsidiaries here and there and uh, and as you can see yeah this was this is the right one because they were created in 2004 so since the lack of transparency in public uh, sorry private companies, then we don't have much data here. So, uh, not even financial summer, summary. It's so strange that uh, in Hungary and mostly in the European Union, you have to uh, submit your annual report, even as a private company, and then the data will be public. So, for, for any Hungarian private company, we can find uh, their uh, annual reports in the public database. You don't even have to pay for it. So just, okay, you have to use the CHAPCHA codes to avoid uh, mass downloads, but, but that's all. Okay, so let's create our own variation for this company. And I don't want to use Atman Z. I know that it's simple and it would make my job easier, but but this one is so better. Well, it doesn't look so much better, but but let's let's do the math in in Excel. So let's create default.
Okay, and I should jump between this one back and forth. So, can you see this size or should I uh, increase it further? Is it visible also in the back? Just... It's okay now? Oh. So, what do we need? What are the ingredients? So, um, the easiest thing, instead of just hitting everything in uh, blindly, uh, let's start with the necessary variables, let's list them, and after that we will do all the ratios and then adding them together, because this is how we can make the uh, less amount of mistakes. So, can I copy all of this? No. Okay, then let's copy each of them. <sighs> Second thing, okay, so now we just have to add it for first year, second year, fourth year, and so on. So, total assets. Obviously, this one is simple because from profit and loss statement, we just have to go here, come up, and um, so this is the question for us because should we add the balance sheet size itself, because if you are just following the guideline blindly, then we can do this, or should we focus only on the relevant items, and especially not, uh, not the asset side, but uh, on the liabilities, and, uh, and in this case, just focusing on, okay, we know that what is this payable, current liability, we can add the debt, which is relevant for us, and also we can add the common equity and retained earnings. So I prefer this one because there is this non-transparent other current liability which can be anything. So, so in this case we have a refined number here and we know what is behind that. And, uh, and the reason why I'm focusing on the liabilities and equities instead of using just the assets, because it says it's total assets, but in this case, we can see that, so we know funding, because we have to take up a loan, uh, but we know that there are these tricky non-transparent assets, so it is intangible and, and things like this. So I think this is much more credible to use these numbers instead of. Okay, we need gross national public, uh, gross national price uh, in the, so GNP. Do we have GNP for France? Professor, yes. As we are taking only the uh, liability size and not uh, taking the unutilized um, goals and other things, mm -hmm. so whether you can uh, create any kind of problem later in our calculation, like mm. we are not recognizing a big part of the assets or liabilities. Uh, hopefully not. So if we can see start to see uh, strange numbers, then still we can uh, change or modify this one. Just at the beginning, it seems to be better. Uh, so in, for for in initial. To whether if you have this kind of thing, you only consider the significant variables. Yes, all. yes, or at least the transparent transparent variables. Okay. But we know that they are well, where we know the meaning. Of the variable, so so with this current liability, other we don't know what is this. Is this present or not present? Uh, so that's why uh, during valuation or during default calculations, it's it's much better to say that let's just pick what uh, we know. Okay. 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 So GMP for France. Okay, so you can see that uh, at that time, so in the 80s, it was called uh, gross national product. Now it's gross national income. We can live with that. So unfortunately, this is in dollars, but do we have this in euros?
no okay then I will do the conversion so. So this is billion, so we should add additional three zeros to get million, and still, let's see that Euro US dollar exchange rate today. So we have a number like this. After that, you can ask the question that, okay, but uh, how about GDP growth? Do we have to deal with this? Right now, let's ignore it. We know that GDP growth is not that relevant, unfortunately, for Eurozone, so they are not in double-digit growth phase or growth forecast. So, they are giving us a huge zero, so we don't have to <coughs> think about this. After that, still, if we are, we would like to go for more precise levels, then we can add some growth rate, but right now we can say that this is good enough. Okay, total liabilities. Then, again, I'm peaky, so I'm just taking what I know. Uh, the reason is also that uh, mostly the company is working uh, together with its parent companies, so yeah. Okay, uh, then first current liabilities. Hey, bro. Current assets. We have these cute inventories which we don't know, so, but at least we know that these are inventories just otherwise. <coughs> we have no idea that. Uh... Oh! There was this scandal this year that they wanted to launch. They they have this small rocket uh, which is uh, outside, so I did not include it in the case study. But uh, they have the Vega C, and uh, somehow the first stage, all the tubing and and other, so most of the flight hardware was uh, they did not find it before launch or before vehicle integration, and then they realized uh, and they find the vehicle at the scrapyard. And it was already damaged, so they had to uh, build a new one. So <laughs> they were not that great in terms of. Okay, so total liabilities are still uh, bigger than. Uh, so, so, sorry, still smaller than total assets, so this is zero. Net income, so profit after taxation, if we are checking the definition, so. With the VAT, C or sorry, CAT. Okay, funds from operation. And that loss. That loss in the last two years. <laughs> yes, for me it's. It will be 1 1 1. Obviously, for you it will be different, but for me it's. <laughs> yeah. It should be. Something like this. Okay, so now let's see that how can we define all these things. So working capital. So if you are just going to Investopedia, then we can see that difference between companies' current assets like cash accounts receivable and so on, and current liabilities. Okay, so this is 
nothing new here. Obviously, if we would have the cash flow statement, which is the third part of the annual report, then we could see that we would have much more better details in terms of numbers, but we don't have. Okay, other things, funds from operations. Yeah, so net income plus depreciation minus gain on sale. Yeah, the problem is that this is for real estate developers, but That still is good enough. So, net income plus depreciation. Yeah. Gain on sale. Why do they have to use? Uh, okay, we don't have this. Okay, so we can ignore that. Okay. Then, after we defined all these things, I should find the right one. So now we should just add. Uh, different components from the equation. And there is this enormous Okay, and also I should add Maybe here the multiples oh, And So we have a constant to start with. So now we just have to copy these numbers here. But once we finished, then we got everything what's supposed to be necessary. This is also minus. Yay! Now, okay, we don't have to care about the constant, so the constant is one. Then log t the GDP. So log total assets divided by the total 
So this is the too big to fail ratio. And also, we can say that let's multiply it already with the constant. Sorry, with the coefficient. So for also we can do the same thing. Or just this one. This guy is just sitting here, so it's much more reliable. We can see that what we are doing here, and then we can just roll through. Okay. Total assets, sorry, total liabilities divided by total assets, which we know that this is total assets, but I should fix it with the dollar mark, and then I can go through. This is divided by total assets, multiplied by this. This is fixed. Current liability is divided. Current assets multiplied by that one. Okay, this will be quite simple because this is zero, so we can ignore this. Then net income divided by total assets. Funds from operations divided by total liabilities. F1. So practically we just have to follow the cookbook. And in this case, unfortunately, I don't have zeros because I was able to see some really nice approaches from some of the groups where you had to you one group did not have to take up any loan, so they were they did not need it financial runway because they were already profitable with one or two million and uh, Uh, but other groups had also this 10 million euros of debt because they were so efficient. So it was really nice to see that you were able to find these niche strategies where you can do as you want. Okay, so for the first year we cannot calculate this one. We have to come up with another solution, but let's see net income minus this net income divided by the absolute value of this one minus the absolute value of this one Minus one. Is this real? Okay, it's changing. And still we have to multiply it with this number here. Yes, yes. Oh, it's good, just uh, this one is not dollarized okay okay so the net income is good 
the following good ordering because t minus t1, t minus t1, yeah. Absolute, absolute, minus, minus. Okay. So here we can ask the question that what? Zero. So we don't have uh, data from the past here. <coughs> mm. Okay, then now we can say that let's sum it up. So let's use the sum function from the constant until here. This is the score. And after that we have to create the probability of default. And this is where I know that it's not nice to check Wikipedia, but this is where I remember that we had a mistake. Yes, one plus. Yeah, this one is incorrect here because this is one minus. Yeah. So exp. divided by 1 plus exp oh you don't know what is exp <laughs> in english it's exp so what is the stupid hungarian name for it i don't like that excel speaks hungarian Okay, then in this case we should use the old-fashioned Euler number, which is this one. Then Euler number here. is on the power of your decimal. So it's on the power of the O score. Good, good, okay. Now divided by one plus this number. Yeah. Wow. Looks nice. So if you are just creating percentages from this one then we can see that still we can tweak it so by checking that okay what was my <laughs> so i i did my things here at total assets and we can say that okay this one can be shady but uh, but already we can see that there is an improvement in terms of probability of default. So, so if we are doing nothing right now, we can see that, okay, this can be uh, assumed to be reliable. And uh, of course I should do this for the Original case study as well. The working capital increased. Why can you increase? I'm not doing any money. Cash. Cash is negative. Oh, they are profitable in the... Okay, sorry. Yeah. They are good. They are good. Just I'm too skeptical and, and ruthless with this company. Come on, this is... This is proper data, just... Uh, 
obviously you don't have to calculate it for your own company because this is general for everyone uh, and now we can see the added value of our performance because we can see that this is the the of default by using horizontal score and yes we should come on this should be allowed to fluctuate only between zero and one hundred percent okay so Shall I make it nicer? This is the red. I mean, the whole thing should be red. Okay, so beautification will uh, happen later. So we can see that, okay, this is the added value that uh, in the second year I nearly defaulted, but uh, and also in the first year, but after that it started to recover. So this is way better. Okay. So now we should incorporate all this information to a report because still we have to submit this one. Okay, so the value of the company and the equity, this is where we ended last time. So now we just have to talk about an evaluation, but probability of default. External environment. Since uh, I was able to collect so much data about the external environment, then we can uh, say something about this. So, the Eurozone in 2024, sorry, the Eurozone is low. Growing phase since 2024 mm. close to technical recession. It's really strange that uh, we can see that employment data is really high. Uh, or relatively high, uh, but practically really high in the Eurozone. So if you are checking Germany, employment ratios are above 80%. So everybody who is in the between 20 years and, and 64 years old people uh, and who are not in the education or, or, or elsewhere, so who are active, uh, then 80% of them are working. So we can't say that we are in an economic crisis right now, but we can see that the economy is growing. So this is the before the storm uh, phase, unfortunately, within the economy. So if fiscal policy and monetary policy is doing their job well, then, uh, then they can avoid uh, any implosion or not. <laughs> so this is always the art of economics. Okay, so we are in a uh, slow growing phase, due close to a technical recession, but uh, or other market, the US is not so this can be a good sign. Uh, <coughs> High inflation, high inflation. So the okay, phase is over. 
So the key central banks started to cut their key policy rates. So the interest rate environment will be accommodated in the future. Which can add accelerate investments. Nice. Okay, so now we can uh, check the industry itself. So according to S and T. Default ratio in the everything industry was two point seven percent in the thirteen, which was slightly higher than the long term coverage off. Let's use this one. So this is weighted average. <laughs> oh my god. So uh, the maximum was historically since uh, 1981 was 9%. So definitely we are in a good shape. <laughs> 2%. Okay, so since we are using sources from the internet, let's use this one. Share of speculative grade ratings totally by industry. Uh, we are this one, the ACGM. Yeah, this one. Okay, see? Oh my god. So 60% of the whole industry is uh, in the speculative grade. Hmm. Let's see. So less than triple B or less than triple B. Hmm, do we have any other additional knowledge here? Eh, nothing. Hmm, we will need this. Average years to default. Uh, we need this when uh, we are calculating uh, the interest rate risk uh, at the lease. So in this case, we don't have to dig up again. Average time to default. is percent no not the percent sorry <laughs> years Good. So we got the external environment. So let's see corporate specific. Hmm. 
issues. So we estimated the so no ratio. Just put it here. So let's make the friend be red color and to the old one it's gray and dotted so we can see that. Uh, <laughs> Why well, this plan is not that great for the first two years, but and because of uh, this was so nice to see that uh, many of you needed just uh, 10 million euros to survive as a financial runway. But at the same time, I had to take up this 5 million, 500 million euros of a loan, which is not that good for the first two years where I'm already in uh, losses. So, okay. So that's why that's the reason why you should not copy uh, everything what I'm doing uh, in terms of product design because this is the mm, end result. Yeah. So we estimated also no ratio, and in the first two years, years of operations, the new business plan. Uh, has an appalling underperforms, let's say. It's more riskier. The original one. one but later. It uh, it improves. So corporate survivor. Drastically. Yeah. So. This is what we can say here that after the probability of default will be around 20%, just we have to survive the first two years. So now we should see that was this so if instead of using uh, what I have done, what happens if I'm just using total assets? So is this result robust or not? So it is this total asset. And again, okay, we don't have here unknown data, so is it different? No, it's not. So it's, it's not the, this is not an artifact of my calculations that uh, I try to become more precise here. So let's use the original version so, so I know it's not cutting corners and that this is how I got better <laughs> or sorry worse numbers but this can be okay mm. yeah. so we need still a conclusion because I just can't close it uh, this way, so conclusion. <clears throat> so if the business plan is executed, the company 
must survive the first two years until launch numbers and recovery of the first stage increases enough to boost the profitability of the company. Yeah, so mine is way more riskier. Uh, the added value of this strategy is this number here. In fundamental share value. Thank you.